The next scenario is very simple. We're going to photo of Annalisa on a sketch. Our lighting setup is very simple. It's straightforward. It's a speed light, a large umbrella. We're going to trigger it with radio slaves. We're going to use manual flash initially. Now, many new photographers are completely lost at this point. They don't know where to start. They don't know which aperture, which ISO to choose. And the beauty of it is you can choose. You decide you want f8. You decide you want f5.6. But we have to be within reason. We can't get f11 100 ISO out of, an, out of a speed light bounce into an umbrella. We're probably working towards f5.6 200 ISO or f8 400 ISO, f5.6 400 ISO, somewhere there, uh, that we're not past the maximum that a flash can produce. So in this case, I decide I want, what do we need, 5.6? 5.6 400 ISO. That's what we're going to use. Now we're going to adjust the power of a flash to give us f5.6 at 400 ISO for that specific distance. Now, manual flash is controlled by four things. Aperture, ISO, the two things in our camera, power and distance. Now, the power we're going to adjust to give us correct exposure for our chosen aperture and ISO and the distance we're working at. Now, the distance is decided for us. We want the flash close enough so the light is soft, but also don't want it so close that it starts impinging on our uh, composition. We don't want the umbrella in, in the part of our frame. So we pull it far enough back that we get a clean composition, but soft enough light. So it's a kind of a rough estimate where you want to place your light. 30 degrees, 45 degrees off to the side, 30 degrees or 45 degrees up to the side, usually a very good start point for a single light source. So let's see what that looks like. In this case, our lighting setup is really simple. There's a light stand, an umbrella clamp of some kind that can tilt, clamp our umbrella, I decided on a 60-inch umbrella, a really large one. A 45-inch, 42-inch umbrella would work just as well. And the speed light. In this case, the Canon 580X2. Even though I'm working with a Nikon, there's no intelligence between the radio transmitters. It'll only trip the flash. So I could use any flash that I wanted. You can even use a, a cheap, older flash for this. So the radio transmitter will trip the other radio transmitter, which will trigger the flash. My flash has to be in manual for this. And then there's a battery pack. The battery pack is always a good idea. It allows your flash to recycle faster than it would just on its own. Now with manual flash, the most simple way of getting the correct exposure for your flash is with a flash meter. Now in this case, I decided I want f5.6 at 400 ISO for this distance. Now I need to find out what my power of my flash should be. Now for this distance, I tap in my settings that I want. I dial in 400 ISO. Now, I took my flash to full power so I can see what my flash is giving me at this distance, so I know what range I'm working with. So holding the flash on the light meter on the same plane as my subject, I'm getting f11. I want a 5.6. So I have got two stops to play with. I can actually drop my ISO or I can make my aperture smaller, but I'm well within what I wanted for 5.6 400 ISO here. So on my flash, which I set to full power so I could get an idea of the range that I could work with, I was getting f11. I wanted 5.6. Difference between f11 and 5.6 is two stops. I could count the clicks on my camera and it would tell me six clicks, six one-thirds of a stop, which is two stops. So I have f11, I want 5.6. So I'm going in and I'm dialing my flash down, two stops half power all the way down to quarter power. This should give me a 5.6. Great, Annalisa, can you just lift your knees a little higher? Drape the arm across your knee, uh, your wrist across your knee there on top. Great, and just lean your head a little forward, come a little closer, there we go. Let's see how that works. Bring your hand a little higher up, there you go, yeah. And your hand on the back, just kind of drape it there very elegantly. Now that, yeah, there we go, perfect. And let's change it up again. Drop your this hand, bring the other hand on your knee again, yeah. There you go. Ah, oh, perfect. Lean your head a little more in. Great. Perfect. Now in this case, I had the light nearly over my shoulder, giving very flat, uniform light on Annalisa. Now, because I'm shooting with manual flash, again, distance, power, aperture, ISO. If I, I can now move the flash around, keeping the same distance, 
and my exposure should be the same. So now I can move my flash over nearly 90 degrees off to the side, getting more directional light on her. Let's see how that works. Great, so I swung the light over nearly 90 degrees off here to give more directional light on Annalisa. Now, with the distance remaining the same, I should get the same exposure. But sometimes with the light coming off at an extreme angle, it looks a little darker. So I could open up a third of a stop. We have that much range on the flash. So I'm gonna just give it another little third of a stop bump here. And that should give us very close to the same exposure that we had at 5.6, 400 ISO. Fantastic, and Lisa just kind of look a little bit off over there. Bring your eyes back a touch, lift your gaze, beautiful. And my camera. Tilt your head over a little bit and drop your chin a touch. My camera. Lift your head a little bit again, and your hand is now behind your head. Just kind of bring it so I can see it's kind of against your palm there, against your side of your face, there you go. And just a hint of a smile. Perfect, and again, and just lift your chin again a little bit. Beautiful, thank you.